as my good friend Bishop Doran, the Bishop Emeritus of Rockford, our neighbor to the south, likes to say on this occasion every blessed year, Happy Ascension Day, which we celebrate exactly according to what it says in the Acts of the Apostles, 44 days after Easter. Some are slow on the uptake this morning. (laughs) In any event, throughout the Easter season, especially in the opening prayers of the Mass, and especially in the prefaces, we've heard reference over and over and over again to the Paschal Mystery. We repeat that many times. And I wonder if it's clear in our heads what that means. These 50 days of Easter time are the celebration of the Paschal Mystery. The Paschal Mystery means the Easter Mystery. And the Easter Mystery is, of course, in the first place, the dying of Christ and the glorious resurrection. That's the Easter mystery. But that's not the end of it. That's why we need 50 days to celebrate it. We need 50 days, as it were, to unpack this mystery is so superabundant. The Paschal mystery includes the mystery of the Ascension. Every time we celebrate Mass, we represent the dying and rising of Jesus. And every single time we celebrate Mass, we rather dramatically represent the Ascension. But sometimes we forget that. And every single time we celebrate Mass, we represent the coming of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we forget about that too. The Easter mystery is a packed mystery so much so that it takes 50 days to unpack it. Now, every time we celebrate Mass, we celebrate the Ascension. And as a matter of fact, in the Eastern churches, the Ascension is their primary model for understanding the celebration of Mass. Their primary model in the East is not the Resurrection, it's the Ascension. Because their term for the mystery of the divine liturgy in the East, their term for that is the great entrance. Jesus was raised, he ascended, and he entered the heavenly kingdom, opening the gates for everybody else, And the scriptures tell us he entered and he took his place at God's right hand. And whenever we hear Jesus at the right hand of the Father, that means Jesus, the one eternal high priest. So the Feast of the Ascension is a very priestly feast. And it's something that priests should never forget as they celebrate the Eucharist, that in the person of Christ, they are privileged to enter the sanctuary, the heavenly sanctuary here. The priest is privileged to enter and to take his place in the person of Christ at the right hand of the Father. The Feast of the Ascension is a marvelous feast of priesthood. A marvelous feast for helping every priest to understand who he is. In the person of Christ, he must suffer, he must die, he must be raised, and then he must make that final great entrance. 
when the Lord calls him home to heaven, if indeed he does. So every priest should have the blood, as it were, of the ascension realization coursing through his veins. It's such an important message to all of us, but a message especially important for the priest about who he is. And so, and this is the second point, and you know I very rarely talk about myself, but 40 years ago today, I was ordained a priest. 40 years ago today. The feast of St. Justin the Martyr. And what did St. Justin do? He tried to use philosophic reasoning to promote and to defend the truth of Christ. And he got killed for it. I stay close to him. At least I try to. It was also the vigil of Pentecost 40 years ago on June the 1st. And I had the great privilege to be ordained by Lawrence Cardinal Sheehan, the Archbishop of Baltimore at the time, and it was his last official act. He ordained 12 Jesuits on the vigil of Pentecost on Saturday, and the following Friday, he resigned. Maybe ordaining 12 Jesuits finished him off. (laughs) I don't know, but he resigned the following Friday. And so today is a day for me to pray in a special way, and I'd ask you to join me for Cardinal Sheehan for Father Henry Lavin, who preached at my first Mass, was also gone to see the face of Christ. For so many Jesuits who are instrumental in my priesthood and in my formation, and thank God I received the pre-Vatican II Jesuit formation before things went out of orbit, and off the map. Thank God for that. Remember, not everything pre-Vatican II is bad. Jesus and Mary were pre-Vatican II. But the most important thing that I want to say personally is how grateful I am for 40 years as priest and the last 15 as bishop. I cannot even begin to thank God. I've had many very joyful days along the way, and I've had enough tough days too. But those tough days are nothing other than the days when the Lord showers his unseen gifts on me. And when I'm having a tough day, that's a call to me to find, amid whatever the problem is, to find the hidden gift of God that's concealed beneath these problems. I am so incredibly grateful today that I don't know what to do with myself. And it started the minute I woke up this morning. I said to the Lord, my God, I woke up. It could have been otherwise. And to then come and celebrate the ascension with you, who are members of my spiritual family, in whose holiness and goodness I delight, 
Your holiness and your goodness inspires me. I'm so grateful for you. It's almost too good to be true. Usually things that are too good to be true are not true. But this is just one more spectacular gift from God to me. My life has been truly blessed in so many ways by the priesthood of Christ and even by a share in his high priesthood as bishop. I never thought it would be that way. Jesuits are trained never to think about becoming bishops because by and large they don't. So, and they never become pope until. <laughs> the Holy Spirit doesn't have to follow any rule book. So, we stand here today together each one of us in his or her own way, tremendously blessed by the Lord. Tremendously blessed. The Eucharist, which represents the suffering, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, and Pentecost, the Eucharist is primarily all about thanksgiving. So I want every one of you to join me in thanksgiving for my 40 years, but particularly to take some time today and recall everything that you have to be grateful for. I've had a truly blessed life, and it's just a wonderful feeling to recall all those memories today. This is the vestment that I wore at my first Mass. 40 years ago. It was 1974. And look at this, it wasn't Paisley. <laughs> and this is the mitre that the Archbishop Consecrator placed on my head when I was ordained a bishop. Since I received this mitre, Pope Benedict has invited all of us bishops to come up higher, and I have. A little slow this morning. Just a little. It must be that traffic. Come, the, you can't go down any street to get here. I also appreciate that sacrifice this morning. So let that gratitude fill our hearts and minds today. I really do need your prayers every day. You have my prayers every day. You're very dear to me. And if you want to pray for me, pray that the Lord will continue to give me the grace to be as grateful to him every blessed day for so many things I could never mention. To be as grateful to him every day as I am today. Praise be Jesus Christ.